there's some bizarre things going on. Yeah, the world used to look completely alien. Yeah. Very different than uh, what we know today. Very different. And we're here to give you some examples. Let's get into it. Yeah. Antarctica is a barren, frozen wasteland with nothing but icebergs, snow, the occasional polar bear or penguin and, and ice. But it wasn't always like this. About 90 million years ago, there was an entire rainforest in Antarctica. In February of 2017, a sediment core sample was taken from the ocean floor off the coast of Antarctica, containing fossil remnants of this ancient swampy forest. The climate was surprisingly mild, about as warm as a pleasant spring day in parts of Europe, around 54 degrees Fahrenheit on average, with summers reaching up to a cozy 66. Rivers flowed, and the soil was rich enough to preserve ancient pollen and roots so perfectly that scientists could actually see the cell structures under a microscope. So, how did this unlikely rainforest even exist so close to the South Pole? Well, back then, Antarctica wasn't the icy giant that we know today. There was barely any ice sheet, and the carbon dioxide levels in the air were way higher than they are now. So that combo created a greenhouse effect, keeping things warm enough for these plants to thrive even in the polar night. Going off of James's point, not only did a core sample reveal ancient spores, pollen, and flowering plants, Radio echo sounding revealed an entire previously unknown landscape littered with subglacial mountains, or in simpler terms, a vast expansion of hills and valleys were discovered hidden beneath the ice in Antarctica that scientists believed were once covered in lush greenery supported by a subtropical climate rather than covered in the permafrost of a frozen tundra. Without ever laying eyes on the area, which stretches over 32,000 square kilometers, or 12,000 miles, scientists were able to map out the landscape and determine its highest highs and lowest lows. With the way the Earth's warming, there is a chance that in the year 3000, our great-great-great-granddaughters will be doing fine, hiking the mountains of Antarctica that have once again revealed themselves to the planet, that is, if we don't all die off before then. Now, at one time, in fact, throughout most of history, there were giant bugs everywhere. Yet another thing to add to your list of things you appreciate about the modern world, the size of our bugs and insects, which is little, little for the most part. Creatures 300 million years ago, though, weren't so lucky. At the time, the planet was covered in vast, swampy forests, and the atmosphere contained a lot more oxygen, about 50% more than what we breathe today. So it would have been pretty humid and swampy and uh, perfect for flies. All this oxygen fueled an explosion of life, including some terrifyingly large insects right out of a 50s monster movie. You had flies as big as modern seagulls, with wings spanning over two feet, yuck. Imagine one of those things swooping down and like gnawing at you. Imagine how loud their buzzing would have been. There would have been gigantic beetles, bees, or, or stuff that was similar. Total nightmare world. But as Earth's climate and ecosystems changed over millions of years, the giant insects eventually disappeared, thank God, forming into the smaller insects and bugs that we have today. Next up, we have, as James and I both previously mentioned, evidence of ancient trees, but believe it or not, there is actually even more evidence than what was found in the core sample you see. In a small part of Alexander Island located on the west coast of the Antarctic Peninsula, scientists actually found the fossils of trees dating back to 100 million years ago. Their logs measuring in at around 25 feet and still standing upright, their roots still attached to the soil deposits from which they grew. The existence of these trees prove the theory of both the temperatures of Antarctica and the existence of a vast network of river systems. How? Well, because the plants found in the area would have not survived in the frigid temperatures of modern day Antarctica, and their root systems clearly indicate that they would have only thrived in a landscape of rich plains adorned with a large network of rivers. Earth used to be full of giant mushrooms. Around 400 million years ago, some of the tallest things around were mushrooms 
called prototaxites. These ancient fungi dominated the landscape, reaching heights of up to 26 feet and widths of about three feet. Now, unlike the mushrooms we're familiar with today, protaxites didn't have the recognizable caps on the top, like the muffin looking things. Instead, they resembled just massive trunk-like structures going straight up from the ground. They were basically like fungal pillars, which sounds really gross, but probably looked pretty cool. Fossils of protaxites have been discovered on every continent. Scientists believe that they played a big role in Earth's early ecosystems. Their size and the fact that they were found all over the globe means they were well adapted to the conditions of the time. I'd love if this was still a thing today. I'd jump around on mushrooms like Mario. Speaking of well adapted, recently scientists found ancient bacteria in Antarctica like nothing we have ever seen on Earth before. Like it's so strange, scientists wonder if it might possibly have come from another planet, perhaps a passenger on an ancient asteroid that arrived on Earth millions of years ago. Why do they think that? Well, generally bacteria have a minimum requirement of six things they need in order to survive. Food, acidity, time, generally warm temperature, oxygen, and and moisture. This bacteria just needs air, making it an absolute scientific anomaly and raising a lot of questions about Antarctica back in the day. Like, first of all, what conditions led to this bacteria calling Antarctica home? And has it always been here, or did it migrate from somewhere else? Did it like the warmth? Does it prefer the cold? Did it arrive on Earth on the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs? Well, right now we really have no idea, but here's to hoping we can find out more in the near future because, well, it's pretty neat. Turns out the color of our planet would have looked uh, very different at the dawn of time too. There would have been a lot more purple. Imagine looking at Earth from space billions of years ago and instead of all the, the green that we see today, the entire planet is just bathed in shades of purple. See, when life first appeared on our planet, it likely wasn't the familiar green we associate with plants today. Instead, the earliest life forms are believed to have absorbed sunlight using a molecule called retinol, which gives off a bit of a purple hue. So if you were an astronaut looking at Earth billions of years back, it would have looked like a giant purple marble spinning in space. This purple phase in Earth's history lasted for a long time, roughly 1.6 billion years. And during this period, some of Earth's oceans were tinged purple as well because of a thick layer of purple sulfur bacteria. These bacteria thrived in oxygen poor environments and use a different method of photosynthesis compared to modern plants. So instead of oxygen, they produced sulfur compounds, turning the oceans into this sea of purple. But as life evolved, plants started using chlorophyll to absorb sunlight and Earth began to transform into the green planet that we know and love today. Chlorophyll is more efficient at capturing sunlight, so green became the dominant color as plants evolved and spread across the planet. I would have loved to see it all purple though. That would have been interesting. All right, so as many of you may know, Antarctica is full of hidden gems and is generally things that you wouldn't expect. I mean, take a rainforest hiding underneath its permafrost for one. And for two, how about the fact that the continent is absolutely littered with active volcanoes, including Mount Erubus, which is an active 1.3 million year old volcano that just so happens to be the southernmost active volcano in the world, home to one of Earth's very few permanent lava lakes. There are only five that we know of to date. Now, while it's no purple planet, it would have certainly been interesting to see Antarctica 7.5 to 1.3 million years ago during the formation of Mount Rubus and some 138 other volcanoes in the area. While it would have still been quite frigid, Antarctica cooled about 34 million years ago, it would have certainly been a once in a lifetime opportunity to have been able to witness the shift in tectonic plates, opening up various pathways for hot magma to come flowing up to the surface of the Earth. Uh, as long as you kept your distance, of course. It wasn't just the planets that were a different color, it was the sky and ocean as well. Earth would have looked totally alien billions of years ago, would have had an orange sky like Mars, and the oceans would have been green at one point. 3.7 billion years ago, the oceans were green because of the iron that was mixing into the seawater. 
So this iron would have rusted and tinted the water. This iron would have given the, the water this rusted, tinted kind of look. Instead of the deep blues and dark greens that we have today, ancient seas were a brighter greenish hue. And most of the land would have been black, covered in cooling lava. And then there's the sky. Today our sky is blue because of the scattering of sunlight by oxygen molecules in our atmosphere. But around this time, oxygen levels were actually much lower. So the sky wasn't blue, it was mostly methane. You would have seen this warm orange haze all the time. And finally, we have Lake Vostok, a freshwater lake hidden beneath the Antarctic ice sheets, containing 22 cavities of liquid water averaging at 10 kilometers or six miles each, discovered in the 1970s. It is estimated that 15 million years ago, the one free flowing Lake Vostok was sealed off under a three kilometer 1.9 mile thick sheet of ice, meaning that at one time Vostok flowed on the surface of Antarctica, rising and falling with the tides about 12 millimeters or 0.46 inches per day. Now the lake sits in complete darkness under the ice under 5,150 pounds per square inch of pressure. But don't let that fool you, scientists still believe that this unfrozen river residing below Antarctica's frozen surface is not only rich in oxygen, but also incredibly rich in life. They believe that organisms living in the lake have been evolving in an incredibly unique way undisturbed for the last 15 million years. While it would be amazing to catch a glimpse of what the lake looked like back then, I have to say I'm pretty curious to see what's going on now too. Too bad Antarctica is closed off to the public and run by the government, because it's hiding aliens. It is. But that's another video. All right, well, we uh, will be back uh, very shortly to speak with you again about something else crazy and wondrous, huh? We sure will, yeah. All right, Gucci. What does that mean? <laughs> it's like good.